guys, it's Elle and welcome back to my channel and thank you so much for being here. Today we're going to talk all about how to use one of my very favorite powders, how I personally use it, and it's something that I know you guys have at home that kind of baffles you on how to use it, so I hope that these next couple tips help you use it more effectively. So before we get started, hit the subscribe button, share this video with somebody you think might like it, and let's do it. Alright, so today we're going to be talking all about, for many of you, the elusive Hourglass ambient lighting powders and I talked about this on a video recently and I asked if you guys wanted to know how to use them and so many of you overwhelmingly amount of you have them and don't know how to use them so for me ambient lighting powders from hourglass if you don't know let me find one that doesn't look crazy because <laughs> I have so many um, this is the ambient lighting powder from hourglass hourglass is a cruelty free brand most of their products are vegan um, this is a talc free a product and it is a mica based product now the reason why I love this powder and use it and have been using it for years is because I find it to be the most effective for mature under eyes or under eyes that are dry that have a problem with powder um, or even just skin overall that has a problem with powder that's super dry especially if you have fine lines around this area or really anywhere around the face now they are used for a specific reason by the brand and I'll go through that as well but I also use them in strategic ways that I hope will help you so first of all they come in a whole variety of shades and I get a lot of questions about me asking to help you guys match yourself and it's really hard to do that when I can't see you in person um, the best thing for you to do is to go to the store and play with them honestly and see what works better for your skin uh, because sometimes you might need a little bit of a lighter color underneath here and then one to kind of finish off the face or just one color throughout the whole skin it's really up to you they do come in travel sizes which I recommend for you to get because they are less expensive but these powders if you keep them really nice and hygienic and in a safe space they will last you for over a year and I know they're kind of expensive but this one has lasted me over um, I'm out I'm veering on a year now okay so I use for myself I use diffuse light on a most everyday basis there are times where I will use ethereal light which is a little bit lighter and that's ethereal light right there. And this is more for when I really would like to have a very significant brightening effect under the eyes. And that's just personally how I like to use them. But on a most everyday basis, I will go for diffused light. Diffused light is a little bit more on a yellow undertone. Um, I also have been known when I'm a little bit more tan to use dim light. Uh, this is definitely one for a medium skin tone and it just is a very nice, uh, rich, and complementary tone to a medium skin tone. There is also luminous light, which is a little bit darker, and that's also for medium to uh, go veering on deeper skin tones. They also have a few more shades for deeper skin tones. Now, the thing about this product is A, you can use way too much of it, B, it does have light reflecting properties to it. So you, if you're oily, you need to apply it strategically. If you are obviously the other skin types, you can use it as you see fit. Um, but if you use too much, it can give you a slight kind of overglow to the skin. So let me start with my first tip. And I have no powder on right now. I do actually have my... Um, hourglass tinted moisturizer on as well as the new hourglass uh, concealer I'm starting to do a video on that reviewing that all right so tip one is going to be setting the under eyes now setting the under eyes you can do in a various amount of ways so I have been very well known to take a nice fluffy brush something like this the Sigma F15. I like this brush because it is diffused. What it means is that it has kind of more loose bristles at the top and more dense bristles down here at the base. And what that does is it allows a little bit more dense application here and then it actually buffs out and diffuses out um, at the tips. That's what these are for. That's why they're made that way to diffuse product. So I'll show you a little bit on one eye. So I will tap in here. Tap, tap, tap. That's all I do. And then I will... Tap it in, okay? This is what I do when I am in a rush. Again, this is not going to set this per se, but it is a powder, so it is going to set it a little bit. Um, but I like it because it adds a little bit of an extra glow to it, and I feel my concealer does not crease as much. 
but my favorite way is to go in with a damp or dry beauty blender okay so when you use a this is a very like very lightly damp beauty blender this is one i picked up from sephora it's like a funny little shape i'm trying it out so i tap it in here okay and then i look up and i tap this in like this my pressure is very light i'm going to go in for a little bit more and tap this down this also will give you a slight highlight right here because of the nature of the powder and so you can see that it doesn't build coverage and that is all i do if you start to add more start to add more start to add more you're going to start accentuating those creases you're going to start seeing more of a glow that than you really really want so that is as much as i do and i look up because i want to spread the lines underneath my eye so i don't get any creases being set and I do kind of take it like this in the triangle that is my favorite way of doing this and when you use a damp beauty blender or a damp sponge it actually pushes the product it makes the powder less powdery and pushes the product into the skin as a second skin now I also have been known to take a dry beauty blender this is the real techniques beauty blender and pop this underneath the eye as well now this is going to give you more of a glow and a little bit more coverage. Do you see the difference? So it's really gonna be up to you, um, but this is one of my preferred methods to use. And it's honestly, I can't tell you which one is better or which one is worse. It just depends on the day for me and how much time I have. So I lean more towards a dry or a damp beauty sponge when I'm using this powder. But that is it, you guys. I think many of you guys overuse this powder and don't push this in enough to get the effect that you want. So that's as simple as it is for the under eyes. Again, you can overuse this powder, so use it sparingly. Really make sure you press this in, okay? Now, for the rest of the face, this is one of my favorite finishing techniques. This powder is, in theory, a finishing powder. That is what it's called, okay? So what that means is, is that after you set your makeup with a traditional setting powder, you will use this powder over that powder to give it a little bit of shift, a little bit of glow, okay? Me, personally, I do not find I need a setting powder if I use this, okay? But let me show you the technique. So I am gonna be using the Mineral Veil Powder by Hourglass. I'm gonna take it on a big fluffy brush. This is the BK Beauty 103 brush. Tap it in here, big brush, tap off excess, and you're gonna start pushing this into circular motions. You really can use way too much product, so make sure that you are using a little bit of product, buffing that in. And yes, I'm going over my cream blush and over my cream contour right now. Okay, so in theory, that is set, all right? This powder lays really nicely in the skin if you guys just saw my recent video. Now what you can do is take the same powder, your diffuse light or your whatever color, tap your brush in here and go over it. And what that does is that gives that beautiful, blurred, diffused, softened look to the face. See how that is? And that is really typically how you get that natural glow to the skin. Isn't it gorgeous? Now, again, I don't find you need both steps, but that is going to be a personal preference for you. But that is absolutely how the brand has said to use this powder, okay? That is the way that they recommend you use this powder. There are more ways, um, as I just said. I also love to give a slight highlight with that damp beauty blender. You can just pop that on the high points of your face. This is the damp beauty blender so that it actually makes the powder one with the skin and doesn't look overly powdered. All right, so that is how to use their ambient lighting powders, which is the general gist of this video. A few extra tips is, for example, they have blushes, okay? These are, uh, this is the blush palette, okay? This is literally just blushes. I have all of them separate as well. They are no different than any other blush, okay? You can absolutely wet them and use them as an eyeshadow. You keep them dry and use them as an eyeshadow. That's just honestly up to you. I will take a, another blush brush. This is a Morphe 
uh, M530. I will swir swirl it around in all of them and I will buff that on. Now I will show you another technique. I'm going to take the lighter of the powders. This is ethereal light. I'm going to be taking it on just a small eyeshadow brush. Just you guys pick your favorite. It's just a small eyeshadow brush with loose bristles. And I'm going to add a little bit of light right here. Okay. Do you see how that opens that area up? This might not be for everybody, but I have been known to do this quite often because this is where I get pretty dark and this is where I like to be bright. It's gonna be a personal preference. It is the most gorgeous inner color highlight, this powder, because it's not reflective to the point of that kind of glittery effect, but it definitely opens up that eye area. Isn't that beautiful? All right, so that is that. Now, you can, of course, take your damp beauty blender before you even put your blush on. You can take it into your powder and you can actually set your whole face. If you are more dry, really actually severely dry, that would also be helpful to add that glow in there. Um, so you can use that in a lot of different variations in the application. So this these powders are really versatile, in my opinion. Um, I think Hourglass really excels here. I think they made an amazing product. And I hope that this helps you understand how to use these products. So just to kind of recap, A, you can use way too much. So please start using a little bit less if you're having more of like this reflective quality or where it's making your lines, especially under the eyes, stand out more. If that's your case, try using a damp beauty blender with the powder and pressing it in. I think that will be really helpful for you. Um, also remember that this can be used as a finishing powder all over the face and gives you a nice, beautiful, healthy glow. All right, so that is it for my how-to on the Hourglass powders. And let me know if you have any questions in the comments and I'll try to get back to you as soon as possible. Thank you all so much for being here as always and I'll see you in the next one. Lots of love from me to you.